Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the AI behavior tree task? Make noise. So I've gone ahead and made a quick little example here. The make noise node itself is very, very simple, but actually seeing how it's used is a little more complicated. So we're going to go ahead and cover that. Now the make noise node is pretty simple. You access it from tasks and make noise. There we go. And it's only got one setting, the loudness of the noise. Now the loudness is a range from zero to one, basically how loud the noise will be. And then that's a multiplier based on the other settings from the pawn emitter and the pawn sensor. So let's see how that works. Let's run this example. What you're going to see on the top left corner is a notice that we heard a noise, where it came from, and the location. So in this case, the generic AI character, and then the location from the generic AI character. What we're doing is simply waiting a second, making the noise, and then waiting five more seconds. Now to actually take advantage of the noise, it requires two things. Your AI character is going to need a pawn noise emitter. This is a component that's part of the AI section, and this is what will allow it to emit noise. Noise lifetime is how long that noise will persist for, and the other settings for the most part you can leave blank. It's nothing specific, it's just a way to alert a pawn sensor that a noise was made. Now speaking of pawn sensors, whatever wants to listen needs to have a pawn sensor. And that is right here, which is your pawn sensing component. Inside of here you have a few more examples, as well as some events that you can override. In here I've overridden the on here noise, and all I'm doing is getting the instigator's name, and the location, and printing out a string. Let's actually go ahead and up this duration to 5 seconds to make it a little easier to see. So it's pretty much as simple as that. Now here's a couple things to keep in mind. Now this is not a, a complete overview of the pawn sensing and pawn emitter system. But if you're playing around with this, by default, pawn sensing will only sense players. In this case, since I want to sense my AI controller, I need to uncheck this. You also have the C pawns option. To make this easier, I uncheck this, but basically, here noises will not fire if you can see the pawn. So it's basically one or the other. So if you're playing around and you run into some issues, you might want to adjust that. Also, if you're seeing more than one message pop up, by default, your sensing interval is half a second, which means every half a second it's going to listen for a sound. Your character, by default, will make sounds for one second. So what you're going to see is two, er two messages because you heard that same sound twice. You could make it something simpler like 0.5 and make all of your sensing stuff to 0.5 and then you're going to go ahead and you will only get one message. So if we run this again, we're going to go ahead and see the message, I heard a noise from generic AI character at location. And if you notice we're seeing two of them because of the fact I have the noise in here somewhere emitting for half a second and I'm listening every half a second. If we adjust it to something like that, we might have something slightly different. So that's something to keep in mind. Those are some settings you want to adjust. Like I'll put this back to one second sensing interval. I'll move my emitter back to half a second. I'll go ahead and play. And now you can see we're only getting one message. But again, we're not covering the pawn AI sensing and emitter section right now. This is just to show you that the make noise node works. It requires the emitter on your AI, so it'll emit the sound itself, and then whatever needs to hear the sound will use the pawn sensing. That's it. It's not very fancy because it's intended to just basically be a very generic node. You can, of course, override this with your own node and do some more advanced noise and AI perception stuff. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.